Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So I think I've covered a couple bits of these off indirectly in previous videos, but I just wanted to do a video dedicated just to working with charts and obviously some of the bits, flexibility that we have with using them. So if you haven't already seen uh, our previous videos, been working with a data set um, that I created, it's all just random data basically. Uh, but if you want to get hold of that, you can download it in the description to this video. And you'll also find a link to download the Power BI application if you also haven't done that as well. Uh, and likely, if you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, link to that again in the uh, description to this video, uh, just so you can catch up if you want to go over any of the previous videos that we've discussed. Uh, as the series is built as a gradual progression, so you can start with firstly installing the application all the way through to trying to do more complex things with uh, the tools that we have available. So the first thing we're going to do is create a simple bar chart or column chart, should I say, being more specific from some of the data that we've got. So let's just add a bar chart. And to do that, all we need to do is go to our visualizations column and, or pane, should I say, on the side here. And you can see if I hover over this one, what's four from the left, we've got the clustered column chart. So if I just click that in and simply to populate it with data, all I need to do is go into country and pull it into axis um, and country from my locations table. Uh, and that's only because I want to summarize at the country level here. And then if I go into total sales, I can then go and drag that into values and you can see it's populated a graph for us. So let's just expand that out so it sort of not fills the screen, but obviously it's a lot easier to see. And we can probably go bigger than that, why not? So a couple of things we might want to do first is we've got these titles around the outside of the graph. So we've got total sales by country, total sales down the, uh, obviously down the left here because that rep uh, demonstrates to us obviously what that value is. And then along the bottom, you can see we've got another header for country. So personally, I'm not a big fan of having the titles on the outside. So I'm going to just go and remove those. In order to do so, all we need to do is go to our little uh, paintbrush here or the paint roller, um, having obviously making sure we've got this uh, graph selected. Select our roller. And then if we go firstly into the X axis and scroll all the way down to the options available there, and I'm just going to go to the title option here and just do this little toggle button and change that to off. And you can see it's now been removed. And you can probably see I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to close that, go back into the uh, Y axis this time, scroll down and find where it says title. There it is. And just toggle that one off. So we got rid of both of those. So the graph already looks a lot tidier and less busy and just removing those two on their own. Uh, in order to just change this title we have here, I think it's quite explanatory really, where it says total sales by country. Um, but for demonstrations purposes, if you wanted to remove the title, all you need to do is go to this toggle button here and it's gone. But I think it's beneficial to keep a title just so the user can see what they're looking at. And if I expand the title, the first one we come to is this option here, the title text. I'm just gonna just remove title or total from that. And you can see we've got sales by country. And oh, if you wanted to get clever with your title text, I didn't even mean to click that, but you can see we've got a formula button just to the right side here. If you click that, you can then obviously include values from other fields into your title heading. Um, we won't cover that off in this video because obviously I've not planned for that at all, but that'll probably be something that we look at in the future if you're interested. So at the moment we've got sales by country and we can see we've got country along the bottom and then total sales. And as it stands at the moment, our data is just ordered in descending order. Um, we have obviously the total number or the largest sales country first, going all the way down to the least. So United States and Germany be in the least. Uh, and this might be as you require it. Um, but again, I'm basing this all upon my own personal preferences. And again, just to show you obviously ways that you can manipulate the charts in here. I would rather have the countries in alphabetical order regardless of obviously their size because you can still clearly see that the United States is going to be the largest uh, country for total sales. If however you wanted to just change from descending from highest to lowest, you wanted it lowest to highest, all you need to go into these little three buttons at the top right here and where it's currently shown as sort descending, all you need to do is go click sort ascending and you'll see everything is updated for you. However, as with my example, I want to have it sorted by country. All you need to do again, go down to the sort by and this time select country rather than total sales. And you can see it's now been updated for us. And obviously we went on to ascending. So ascending means obviously A to Z. 
But if you wanted it in from Z to A, uh, so obviously reverse alphabetical order, then all you just need to do is just go onto the sort descending option you have available to you there. The last thing I probably want to do with this graph is just do some, well actually there's two parts. The first part is to add some data labels, just so rather than trying to cast your eye across these to the left to see what value that each one is, if we just go into our, our little paint roller and go down to, where is it, data label, labels, so just, just before halfway down, you can see it's currently toggled off. Click that button, toggle it on, and you can now clearly see each value above the column. And obviously it dynamically updates, so as the column shrinks and grows, that number will obviously retain that distance above the column. And now, lastly, the thing I want to do is just play around with the formatting of this number. So at the moment you see it's give, currently given us 0.69 million. So it's trying to give the value in millionths. All I want to do is go into data labels, and this time we're going to say, where it says display units, it's just auto, so it's going to go to the biggest value, which is the millionth one. I'm just going to change this to thousand. So you can obviously go millions, billions, trillions, none. So if we went to none, obviously you see the full value. Or alternatively, you can go into thousands, which just makes it smaller. So it's whatever preference you have. And obviously the more data they have, probably the more, um, shall I say, simplified or smaller you want that summary. But I'm just going to leave it as, though, actually, let's just put it onto none because uh, that works for this example. So that's how we can play around with the sales by country in this example. If we do go back to our field setting here, the other benefit we have when working with charts is you might want to first say, okay, let's make a sales by country, and you then might want to copy this and create one by city. And city is going to be quite busy for us, so if just get rid of country. And you can see, obviously, we've got all the cities organized there in alphabetical order. And I think they are. Is it just check? So sort ascending. And let's go sort by our city. So even though I copied it, it still re went back to default. So you can see how everything looks by city at the sales level. The benefit of this, obviously, if we click onto France, is that's now going to filter all those France ones out for us. But as you can see, all it's really all it has done is it's just highlighted the France ones and left everything else in there. Well, okay, it does the it answers the question we've done here, but actually we want it to be a bit more filtered. So when we click France, we only see the French cities within this second graph. So let's just deselect France for the time being. And then what I'm going to do is having selected my uh, chart on the left here, so the chart was going to be driving uh, the filtering. We can go into data drill, or no, sorry, format, and then go onto this button here of edit interactions. So if I click edit interactions, and then what you can see it's done is obviously this is the chart selected is what's going to drive information. But if we now look on the sales by so sales by country, apologize, but um, sales by city, you can see at the moment we've got this option here. What means highlight the values what apply to the selected uh, value. We could either get we could get remove, so it does none. So when France is selected over here, nothing happens. The one we had selected is highlight. So when I select France at the moment, you can see it just highlights those French cities. But we can go on this left option here, which is filter. So if I select filter, what happens now? Every time I select France, only the French cities will be available to us in that bar chart. Likewise for Germany. Uh, Great Britain, Italy, Spain, and the United States. So you can see it's a really easy way to now filter those charts. One thing you must remember though, once you've updated this, is just to untick this edit interaction, just so you get out of that edit mode. Um, so yeah, if nothing's selected, you'll see all the cities for everything globally, but when one of them is selected, you will just see the applicable cities or the applicable, whatever it may be, uh, what comes down in lower in the hierarchy for your selection. And I'm just going to change the title for this. So sales by country. This should actually be uh, title sales by city. So we've got that updated for us as well. Obviously, we've, in this example, we've got a separate city one, but let's say you wanted to be able to drill down functionality all within sales by country. So if we select sales by country and we go back to our field option here, if we select city and drag that down underneath country, at first glance, nothing has happened. What that now enables us to do is obviously we can now go through the hierarchy of country or location, so I say, simply by jotting around these two or these buttons here. So we've got some options to us. So we'll ignore this first down arrow. So we've got this 
double down arrow, so this means go to the next level in the hierarchy. So if I select that, you can see it goes down to city. So I can either go this up arrow here to return to the top, or if I go the double arrow, it will take me to the next level in the hierarchy. So obviously brought both country and city now contained within one graph. So this is really useful again, if you've got a lot of information you're trying to display on the sheet, rather than having 101 different graphs, you can capture a lot of information at different hierarchy levels all within one chart. So we can go back in. So we've got, yeah, so the up arrow always takes us back up. So the double one goes to the next level in the hierarchy. The next one along here go expand all down to one level in the hierarchy. So again, that just takes us down to the bottom. But the real beneficial one I find here is you see this second arrow, what says click to turn on drill down. If you select that, you can see it's selected because it's highlighted. What will now happen is when you select one of these countries, it'll automatically drill down to the next level, but also filter that information as well. So if you we select France, you can see it's drilled down, but it's only now showing us all of the cities available within France. So if I go back up, and now this time we'll go to Germany, you can see how it's now filtered to Germany. So this just gives you another way of working with the chart rather than having this second uh, chart over the side here. And the reason that's not so desirable is as you can see at the highest level when everything or nothing is selected, you don't really want this big chart over the right here which just taking up all this space or just looks really messy with all this data. You can simply achieve that by having the drill down turned on within one chart and being able to go through each of these levels or countries as you desire. So having done our formatting with this particular graph, let's say we wanted to change the type of graph we're using. All we need to do to do that is select our chart and then we can navigate to whatever desired chart we want to go to. So let's say stat bar chart and you can see it's now updated to the stat bar chart and some of these columns. So we've got like such stat column charts and clustered bar charts. A lot of these require us to have more uh, data in terms of obviously a legend. So obviously at the moment it's just, um, so what we could do to do an example. So let's say we've got our stat column chart here. Let's say that we wanted to bring remove city from our drill down options and put it into the legend. You can see how obviously what it's now done is it's given us a breakdown of the country, obviously total sales, and it's broken down the city into each one of those columns. So that's the benefits of using the stack charts. Uh, probably not so beneficial for this. I'd probably revert back to what we were using before of having the ability to drill down, but that's just to show you how to use that if you wanted to. And then the, probably the last chart I'll just quickly cover off is the pie chart. Um, like I say, these are the most sort of popular charts you could say uh, without using um, like line charts, where we'll go into a separate video. If you want to change to a pie chart, all you need to do is select pie chart and you can see how um, obviously that updates us for us as well. And likewise, we still have the drill down facility available to us. So if you wanted to go into France, see this blue one here, you can see how now it pop updates and gives us the city level for France. Uh, if we require. So drill down mode works across a lot of these charts and is a really beneficial tool for us to use. So as we looked at in previous videos, when we looked at just data in tables, we had the flexibility of being able to play around with the amount rather than having to add additional fields. So the moment we can see we're using the sales, um, the sales data to generate the total sales per location. But let's say we wanted to actually look at what the average sale amount was, the total number of sales or even the highest and lowest sale amount for even that country. All we need to do, as we did in our previous example with the tables, is having selected the table, navigate to our values field, what well says total sales, do our drop down and you can see we've got a range of options available to us again. So if you want an average, all you need to do is select average and you can now see the total average sale per country. Or if you wanted uh, maybe maximum, you can see the maximum sale, uh, maybe the minimum sale, or lastly in this example, you might even want to see the total number of sales. So again, all that flexibility is available to us in the charts as well. So I know we didn't really go over all the broad spectrum of the different charts available to us, but as you'll see, obviously each one has probably its own personal beneficial use, uh, and it's probably only worth going to those when we've got the data to go through it, rather than trying to maybe create something that isn't as easy to follow uh, just for the tutorial's sake. But again, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated by myself. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that now and make sure you hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos as they come out. If you have any questions at all, please drop me a comment below this video and I will get back 
to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.